all right guys welcome back to another set so let's jump straight into this question yeah we're going to work through number 12 all the way through to 16. okay let's go so the curve c has equation y equals 1 over 3 x cubed minus 9x plus 1. find dy over dx okay if you guys never seen this before this is known as the gradient expression so an equation used to represent a gradient and the way to find this uh, dy of dx, this means you have to differentiate the y expression in, or with respect to x. So let's have a look here. We're going to just do it in a very quick and easy way. So all you have to do is basically look at term by term. Yeah. So we look at x cubed. So with x cubed, the, the process is, is that you subtract the power by 1 and this becomes x squared. And with that power, you drop it to the ground. So drop the 3. So it'll be 3 times the third, which is 1. And minusing the power by 1, you get 2. So x power 2. If, you, if it's 9, if it's x, because it's, there's only one power left, if you subtract it, you get 0. So it vanishes. And with that 1, you drop it to the ground. So 1 times 9 is 9. If you have a constant plus 1, it just vanishes. It becomes 0 because there's no x terms. So you can't differentiate nothing with respect to x there. And that's it. You're done. And this is literally all you do. Now, let's look at part b. Find the range of values of x for which c has a negative gradient. So when the gradient expression here mm. is negative. What this means is that you have to set this equation x squared minus 9 and make it less than 0. So we're going to find the values of x which makes this equation less than 0. Now because this is a quadratic or actually because it's a difference of two square numbers. You've got two square terms x squared minus 9. We could use the double bracket method. So when you've got something squared minus another squared you can square root both of them and put it here so it's square root x squared is x and x square root of 9 is plus minus 3 so plus 3 minus 3 and of course less than 0 now you just have to find which values of x between these critical values that makes this less than 0 so what i would do so first things first let's say so we can say that the critical values are when x equals minus 3 or x equals plus 3 so these are solutions of the quadratic and all you guys want to do is literally draw a straight line like a number line on the x-axis and because you know this is a quadratic equation so it's a u-shape and it cuts something like that at x equals minus 3 and plus 3 we can see that below the curve it's going to be around here so this is when it dips below the curve so when the curve dips below the line sorry and we can see clearly that's between the values of minus 3 and 3 and we found it. So we can say that this, the range of values of x has to be between minus 3 and plus 3. Okay, number 13. So all the students in year 11 at the school must study at least one of geography, written by G, history, H, and religious studies, R. So in year 11, there are 65 students. Okay, so this looks like a Venn diagram problem. So we've got triple Venn diagram here. Now it says here that of these 65 students, we know that 15 study geography, history, and religious studies. So what that means is that you can put 15 bang in the center because this is the the common intersection between geography, history, and, and um, religious studies. We know that 21 study geography and history. So this means that you're talking about this interval right here. All of this must add up 21. We've got 15 already, so there's six left that adds up to 21. Um, 16 study geography and religious studies. So geography and R is over here. 15 plus 1 is 16. Um, 30 study geography. So geography is the entire circle geography. We got 30. So all of this must add up 30. So we got 6 plus 15 plus 1. That is, uh, I should know this, 22. So we got 8 left. So all of this adds up to 30. So that's always, guys, you just have to sum up carefully okay next one 18 study only religious studies so careful with this terminology you got two bits you got only re religious studies and you got 37 study religious studies when you use the word only it means literally just this this small segment here that doesn't include a geography or history so just this region here and that value is 18 and now we know that 37 study religious studies so that means a whole circle must add up 37 so in your calculator, add up 18, 15, and 1. 18 plus 15 plus 1. That gives us 34. So that means a remainder of 3. So now we have 37. 
Okay, so now the Venn diagram is almost complete. So we're only missing our history segment and the outside segment. Now, just to be sure, we look back at the question and at the top it says that all students in 11 must study at least one of the three subjects. So this means that this needs to be completely filled out. So the way to fill this out, we know there's a total of 65 students. So let's go ahead and add up all these figures, yeah? Let's see how many have been included. So when you do that, so I've already done this, you get 51 students, meaning that the remainder is going to be 14, okay? So 50, so 65 minus 51 to give us the remaining for only history. So now we know that all 65 students have been accounted for. We can say that there's been zero outside the circle. So that's it. One thing to note here, yeah? if you've counted every single person here and now 65, you can never leave a blank. Because if you leave a blank, you'll lose a mark. That's the thing. Yep, it's a bit harsh, but that's how it is. But anyway, let's look at the next bit. So a student in year 11 who studies both history and, and, and religious studies. So we're talking about only people who study both. So we can see that three people study both and 15 study both. Of course, they study geography, but they still study both history and religious studies. Okay, so keep those two numbers in mind. We're going to ignore the rest. Work out the probability that this student does not study geography. So the people who do not study geography is, of course, these three because 15 of them also study geography. So the probability is therefore going to be the three people out of the total here, which is 18. And that's it. This is your answer. Okay, number 14. So T is directly proportional to the cube of R. Okay, so as a statement, we need to write this as an equation, yeah? So we can say, in terms of it, T is directly proportional, so that's a symbol, to the cube of R, so R cubed. Now, in terms of an actual mass equation, this little alpha looking thing means proportionality. You can also write it as t equals some scale factor k. So it's always equal k. This literally means equals k of r cubed. So this is the equation they want. Okay. You can do this anything. If it says t is directly proportional to just r, it will be t is proportional to r, which is t equals k times r. Or if it's inversely proportional, it will be t is inversely proportional to r. So this means one inversely proportional means one of r, which is the same as t equals k over r so again depending on how they phrase the sentence you have to pick the right one so in this case we're going to use of course this one here t equals k r cubed now next bit so t equals 21.76 when r equals 4 so let's go ahead and plug this into the equation so we're going to have 21.76 equals k times 4 cubed so 4 cubed you can put in your calculator that's uh, 64, so k times 64, 64k. Now, you can literally find the value of k. You can find the scale factor. So dividing 64 across, so 21.76 over 64, you're going to get 0 0.34. And that's it. Now, it says find the formula for t in terms of r. Well, you got the formula here. When it says in terms of r, they don't want k. So replace the k with a number. So we say that the, the form is going to be now t equals 0 0.34 r cubed. And that's it. Easy. And that just goes here. Now next one, b. Work out the value of t when r is 6. Right, easy stuff. Just replace r is 6 in the calculator. So you're going to have t equals 0 0.34 times 6 cubed. Let's see what that gives us. And you should get the 73.44. So this is literally an easy question. Once you do, If you do this once or twice, you'll master it. Okay, number 15. So the total surface area of a solid hemisphere, which is, by the way, a half a sphere, is equal to the curved surface area of a cylinder. Okay, before we move on, we're given both of these in, in the formula booklet at the top. So let me just quickly go up. So you can see over here that we have um, a curved surface area of a cylinder, which is 2 pi r h. So that's the value we want. And this is the shape of it. They're only interested in the, the curved bit around. They don't care about the two circles. As for the as for a hemisphere, um, it's going to be half of the surface area of an actual sphere. So half of 4 pi r squared is 2 pi r squared. So with this in mind, these two values are going to be equal. Because yeah? that's what it said. These two values are equal. 
Okay, so let's let's go back to the question now. Okay, so I'm gonna write right here. So total surface area, so two pi. Oh yeah, oh yeah, in the hemisphere, sorry. Because the hemisphere is this is this is two pi r two pi r squared, but then we also the hemisphere also has a circle base which has an area of pi r squared. So that means the total surface area for hemisphere is actually pi r squared plus two pi r squared, which is three pi r squared. So let me just update this. 3 pi r squared and that's going to equal the curved surface area of a cylinder which we just found out was 2 pi r h where h is the height okay so with that in mind that's all good now it tells us that the radius of the hemisphere is r so we got that soid the radius of the cylinder is twice the radius of the hemisphere okay so if the radius is r that means for hemisphere it's not actually r it'll be 2 times r so it'll actually be 4 pi r h okay so far so good okay so given that the volume of the hemisphere to the volume of the cylinder is 1 to m find the value of m okay cool i think before we even look at that let's go ahead and simplify this equation here yeah so with equations like this you can cancel pi on both sides um you can cancel one r here and one power of r so now you're left with three r equals four times the height so we could say that uh, r equals divided by 3, 4 height over 3, 4 h over 3. So this is just the relationship they have with each other. Now what they're doing here is that they're using the volume formulas here. Yeah? So the volume of a hemisphere, uh, the first one, was um, it's in the formula book as well. It's going to be half of a sphere, which is 4 thirds pi r cubed. So half of this one is going to be 2 thirds. Okay, you just, you just divide it by 2. For the volume of a cylinder, is the, the formula was um, pi r squared h. And we know that the radius of a cylinder was twice the radius of the hemisphere. So this r here will be 2r. So it will be 2r squared. Okay. So just these little deals, we've got to be very careful. And then just open this up. 2 squared is 4. So it's going to be 4 pi r squared height. So this is the actual formula. Okay. All right, so so far so good. Now, what do you do next? So now we say that the volume of the hemisphere to the volume of the cylinder is one to m. Okay, so from at this stage, okay, I need to think. So it's some sort of ratio. So what we could do, we can plug in. We we have to make them have the. We have to pretty much make them have the same unit. So what we could do, we can plug in a radius here into let's see into both equations actually. We can do that. Actually. So for the volume of the hemisphere, we're going to have 2 thirds pi times 4h over 3 uh, cubed. Now to just do this easily, in your calculator, just write 2 over 3 times 4 over 3 cubed. Okay, because it's going to simplify for you. Times 4 over 3 uh, cubed. Wow. It's going to give us 128 over 81 and then pi h cubed okay now for the volume of the cylinder okay so the radius is here so we're going to put that in so it'll be 4 pi um 4 h over 3 squared times h again in your calculator to simplify the numbers put 4 times 4 over 3 squared so 4 times 4 over 3 squared will give us 64 over 9 and then we've got pi h cubed okay so now we're looking at both of these here yeah? it's saying here so they're, they're trying to find like a like a, a radius a scale so they're saying they're comparing the volume of the hemisphere to the volume of the cylinder so we, let's come let's compare these two here yeah? so we've got 128 over 81 to 64 over 9 we don't need to we don't need to copy the rest because they, they they're pretty much in the same units and now they're trying to scale it down to 1. Okay, so they made the volume of the hemisphere 1. So we can divide both sides by um, uh, by this value, 120 over 81. Yeah, it's kind of kind of weird. Dividing both by this scalar, you're going to get 1 on the left side. So 64 over 9 divided by 128 over 81. And you'll get exactly 4.5. That's it. So that means the volume of the... What is it? The cylinder is four and a half times bigger than the volume of the hemisphere. And that's the M value, 4.5.
Ooh, that, was, that was a hard one. <laughs> that was a little tricky. Okay, 16 now. Ooh. So, rationalize the denominator of this third, where A is an integer and B is a prime number. Okay, rationalizing denominator. All that literally means that we need to clear the bottom fraction and make it non third To do that, we just literally copy the entire equations. Okay, unfortunately, you can't smash this in your calculator, which, which normally you, you could have back in the day. And now the way this works, I'm, I'm just going to change the color pen. If it's A minus 4 root B at the bottom, you got to flip the sign to a positive up and down. So A plus 4 root B, A plus 4 root B. And just put brackets around everything. So this is very, um, this is pretty much the same procedure every time. So try and, look, try and memorize the steps, yeah? And now all we have to do is literally expand the bracket. So you can see we've got two double bracket problems. So let's work with the top for a second, yeah? We're going to have A times A, which is A squared. Uh, a times root 4B, which is A root 4B. And we're going to have another identical one, A root 4B. So we're going to have two lots of A root 4B. Okay. Uh, next one, root 4B times root 4B is going to give us a whole 4B. Okay, because you have the same thirds. Now, bottom half is going to be a times a, which is a squared. And then you can see something similar. a times root 4b is a root 4b. Then you're going to have minus a root 4b. So they actually cancel each other out. So that vanishes. And the last bit, minus square root 4b times root 4b is going to give us a minus 4b. And that's it. So, yeah, there's not much you can do. All you can do is literally just tidy up some terms so for example you got square root of 4 which is 2 so 2 times 2 is 4 here so you get a squared plus 4a and then you left with root b there plus 4b over a squared minus 4b you can leave it like this this is one type of solution there's really not much you can do there okay part b now so given that oh wow given that you got something like this equal to x to the m over y to the m find the value of m Okay, for these kind of problems, the trick is, is to pretty much make the left-hand side look like the right-hand side, okay? Let's go ahead and deal with these powers, yeah? So, notice how x is the bottom. We need to bring it to the top. But because we've got a negative power, if you apply the, if you use the negative 5, the negative power means you take the reciprocal. So, it's going to be now the square root of x over y to the power of positive 5, okay? And this is going to equal x to the m and y to the m. So we're going to only work with the left hand side, yeah? So we're very close now. Now the square root is the same as power by half. So because they're both power by half, you can just take it outside. So it'll be 5 times a half. So it'll be 5 over 2. Because you times 5 times 2. 5 times a half is 5 over 2. And again, this equals x to the m over y to the m. And lastly, now you just distribute 5 over 2 to both of these. So it'll be x to the 5 over 2 over y to the 5 over 2. And that's it. You can see m equals 5 over 2. Or you can make it 2.5. Both is good. And that's it, guys. That's literally this question done.